Good evening and thank you for joining us. Happy New Year. Before we get, begin tonight's meeting, I'd like to welcome everyone to a in-person and virtual meeting. Uh, board members and staff should be visible on your video. Also, I'd like to remind board members of two things. Please mute your microphone when you are not speaking and please do not use the WebEx chat function. This virtual meeting will have public comment periods both during ordinance and the regular public comment period. Regular co public comments will be limited to three minutes. If you are having any technical difficulty, uh, town staff is prepared to help you resolve that issue. Uh, please contact Drew Anderson. His information is at the top of tonight's agenda. We appreciate your patience with this format. As with our in-person, as our as in with our regular in-person meetings, our hope is to create a friendly and respectful atmosphere for public dialogue. I call to order this regular meeting of the Monument Board of Trustees, January 4th, 2021. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ms. Hogan, will you take roll, please? Mayor Wilson? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott? Here. Here. Trustee Clark? Here. Trustee Lakind? Here. Trustee Romanello? Here. Trustee Stevens? Here. Trustee Unruh? Here. Okay, before us, we have a agenda, a consent agenda. Is there any modifications to the agenda? I would like to make one modification, adding a discussion item uh, in regards to the resolution, the possibility of a resolution supporting local businesses. I would like to add that as uh, between ordinances and resolu resolutions, because I do know we have people online listening to hear that portion of the meeting. So that would be between item four and five. Is everyone in agreement with that? I am. Yes. 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 Okay, do we have a motion to approve the agenda as modified? I move to approve the agenda as modified. Second. I have a motion and a second, Ms. Hogan. Trustee Clark? Yes. Trustee Unruh? Yes. Mayor Wilson? Yes. Trustee Lakind? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott? Yes. <clears throat> Trustee Stevens? Yes. Trustee Romanello? Yes. Okay, first item on the agenda ordinance. <clears throat> Ordinance number 01 2021, an ordinance approving the final plat for sanctuary point filing number eight. Ms. Flynn. Good evening. Oh, sorry. Good evening, Mayor and Trustees. I'm just waiting for Drew to put it up. Perfect. Sanctuary point filing number eight is final plat. It is within phase three of Sanctuary Point, which is off of Sanctuary Rim Drive. It is 45.551 acres in size. The Board of Trustees approved Sanctuary Point Phase 3 Final PD Site Plan on January 21st, 2020. This filing consists of 27 lots, three tracks, and two streets. The lots range in size from 9,854 square feet to 2.241 acres. The tracks will be owned and maintained by Triview Metro District. The plat is consistent with the approved PD Site Plan and all applicable code standards are met. The project summary. Tracks A through C include open space, pocket park, trails, buffer, landscaping, public utilities, and drainage. This consists of about 62 acres, 62% of the total acres. The project also consists of 27 single family lots. On December 9th, 2020, 
one member from the public had questions and concerns. Some of his concerns were traffic regarding the intersection of Baptist Road and Jackson Creek Parkway being saturated from all development, fire safety regarding potential wildfires, Glen Eagle Drive needs to be continuous to Higby Road, and proper infrastructure in place from Higby Road, Glen Eagle Drive into Sanctuary Point. The Planning Commission's vote was 5-0 to zero to approve this ordinance. The Planning Commission recommendation. Planning Commission recommends approval of ordinance 01-2021 final plat of Sanctuary Point filing number 8 based on the findings that the proposed development complies with all standards and criteria for approval. And the applicant, Lauren Moreland, is here from to answer any questions regarding this project as well. Okay, this is a public hearing item, so I will open it up to the public before we do board questions. Um, is there anyone from the public who would like to speak for or against this item? Officer, do we have anybody in the hall waiting to speak? Drew, do we have anybody online wishing to speak? Okay, well, Mr. Jack Frank, did you want to comment on this particular item? Okay, at this time, I'll bring it back to the board for questions and comments. Um, but I will leave the public hearing portion open for the time being. Questions from the board? Yeah, I'd like to, I mean, the issue was raised with traffic. That's been a issue that's come up in the past. Uh, I'd like to, from the drawing here, it seems like Sanctuary Rim Drive is the only way in and out of this uh, area that we're approving tonight. Is that correct? And uh, the map that you've drawn kind of cuts off Sanctuary Rim Drive. So I don't really know where that road goes into it just kind of sits there you know it's just cut off from the from the drawing actually there's three roads to get in and out is sanctuary rim drive to glen eagle drive sanctuary rim to baptist road and kingswood drive has a knox knox box for um, fire legs fire department to get through if need be were the concerns that ron is asking about were they specifically to filing eight or was this just again Again, in general, the whole project, the whole project. Yeah. How many uh, remind me how many. Uh, this is there's homes. Three, three phases and no homes, homes in this particular oh, this one? filing. Yes, on this 27, 27 in this yeah. filing. So other than Sanctuary Rim Drive, are there any other exits? Uh, so that's pretty much the way to get in and out of this area. Well, you can get in off of Baptist Road into the development, and then it, it meanders into this um, filing. And then to get out, you can get out through uh, Sanctuary Rim to Glen Eagle, and then to Baptist Road from there. Classic homes. Um, Lions Tail also connects to the west off of that point of connection. So when we worked through the master traffic impact study with PD site plan one, um, we had initially run that for 650 homes and a church site. Um, through the annexation and sketch plan process, that became 600 units. And so with each phase, PD site plan one, which was 255 lots, PD site plan two was 273 lots. 
PD site plan three is 72 lots, uh, filings eight and filings nine. And so with each PD site plan, we had to reprove the traffic impact study. And if you recall, promontory point residents had concerns with traffic right. um, connection and overall flow and what the roads were designed to handle. And so ultimately, I believe not only was all 600 lots and what the flow was determined to be proportionally going east, going west, but also PD site plan one, based on how the classification of, of Glen Eagle Drive, PD site plan one of Home Place Ranch actually has full access through that same connection point with the same two egress routes. And then um, that'll be reevaluated on future PD site plans by them. Okay. And that main uh, thoroughfare, does it have the capacity to be expanded to four lanes if it right now I assume it's just a two lane road? It is two lanes with turn lanes. So promontory point when classic homes developed and built that we knew the eventual connection home place ranch was actually further along than promontory point at that point um, in their planning phase. Around that same time frame 2006 we had purchased sanctuary point knowing that eventual connection. So when we designed and built um, Glen Eagle Drive, we built that too, and, and Debbie can help me out as what that classification is. It's a arterial primary uh, arterial. So I think that's 10,000 trips a day is what that's rated at based on right away width through there. And so we looked at that. Uh, HR Green, the engineers for Goodwin Knight also um, had to mirror a traffic impact, not mirror, but conduct their own traffic impact study for that stretch of road. Findings were very similar that um, more than sufficient capacity based on engineered numbers. Obviously, if people wait for, I don't, I've never been through that intersection on a two light cycle. It's a one light cycle. The timing on the signals are a little bit off in my opinion for Glen Eagle, but you don't see a pent up demand of 20 cars lined up trying to get in or out. And, and we work through the emergency access side of things and safety. We would have loved to have that connection through uh, Kingswood but that was gonna, that was a county road and was not acceptable for the amount of traffic that would have likely used that. And so we worked with um, uh, Fire Marshal Baumgartner and Chief Trudy at the time, as far as making that an emergency access gated with Knox box, which the fire department has the keys to. Okay. As a third point of, of access. Mr. Mayor, we may wanna revisit. I know originally because the county seemed to wanna deny us access to that, um, What's that main Higby Road? Uh, yeah, I haven't been involved in any of those conversations. You haven't been involved in any of those conversations. No. Mr. Foreman, do you recall that that they weren't able to develop through to meet up with Higby because of the county? Does that ring a bell? If I recall, there was an emergency road that was there. <laughs> yes, um, eventually, um, Sanctuary Rim Drive will connect to Higby Road with Home Plays Ranch development when they do develop, and that's been approved. Yeah, that was that was a different development. What, what, what mm -hmm. phase was it? Sorry, and it was a certain there was a certain phase that we we mandated that that happen. Is that correct? I want to oh, was it phase two? I think it was phase two. Okay. Yep. Okay. All of right. the development next to yours. Yes. Yep, they're responsible for it, not saying sure any point to connect it to Higby Road. Okay. Okay. Are you good, Ron? Yeah. Um, I noticed one of the comments in our packets was the um where is it? It's addressed, but just to reiterate. What we approved, what was approved for this era, this sanctuary point area in the 2000s was more homes than we're actually putting in now, correct? We've actually reduced the number of. Well, no. By the time we work through it, it's, it's approved for 600, and that's what the annexation agreement sketch plan ultimately stated. Initially, we had a layout consistent with 650 before we made it through that process. And so all of the initial master traffic impact study was based on the 650 units plus. The commercial or church site on the, I'll call it the kind of southeast corner of the project. Um, and so the initial master traffic impact study back in 2006 ish, 2008, mm -hmm. somewhere in there, was for more units than what is currently shown. But we've went through and, and it, say, adjusted, but reanalyzed that. Um, Jeff Hodson, our traffic engineer, with each phase. So as we brought on the 255 over 
I think it was four filings, five filings in PD site plan one. That was analysis, analyzed at that PD site plan one approval, both before planning commission through the one year process ahead of that up to board of trustees, sorry. And then the same thing when we brought on the 273 lots and some of you may have been, um, I know Mayor Wilson, you were here when we worked through PD site plan two um, because there was some ambiguity in regards to where Sanctuary Rim Drive ended to the west. And so actually when we got PD site plan two approved, we were required to build Sanctuary Rim Drive through PD site plan three. We platted that with filing four. And then we obtained an access easement from Goodwin Knight um, and a maintenance agreement from Triview to actually build 1,100 feet of road off of our project, which is unprecedented. I've never seen that happen. And so we built that connection to have that full movement east-west connection through Sanctuary Point in order to get PD Site Plan 2 approved. And before we could um, obtain certificates of occupancy on any lots in PD Site Plan 2. And so we, we built that extra stretch of road, not only through Home Place Ranch, but also through PD Site Plan 3, about an extra mile of road ahead of time. Thank you for putting in that extra effort. Uh, you have any questions? No. Uh, questions from our online board members. Uh, Mayor Pro Tim Elliott. Um, I do have a question. Maybe I didn't hear correctly from uh, the speaker, but I wanted to, and I'm just flipping back to the board packet because the slide's not up. In the vicinity map in regards to Sanctuary Rim Drive, um, that looks like there is a disconnect in the in the slide in the board packet where Sanctuary Rim Drive does not go east to west contiguously. Is that going to eventually be developed or not? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, do you have a page number for our packets? Um, yes, I believe it is. Um, it's slide two, and I believe it's twenty one. In the board pack, and it says this. One second, we're looking. You're you're likely, um, Miss Elliott, likely not seeing that overall connection because this was um, on the front page of the plat, and so it shows our boundary. Um, not showing that connection. It actually doesn't show Glen Eagle Drive at all there, if I'm if I'm seeing that correctly. So that does flow through the lower southwest corner. Sanctuary Rim Drive loops through um, Home Place Ranch and then connects to Glen Eagle Drive where it had initially stopped on the north end in Promontory Point. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Trustee Clark, do you have any questions? No. no. Trustee Lekind? Nope. Uh, Trustee Unruh? I do not. Okay. Uh, Mr. Anderson, did we have any other public comments? Okay. At this time, I will close the public hearing portion and I will bring it back to the board for further discussion or a motion. Thank you. I'm making an ordinance, uh, making a motion for ordinance number 012021 and ordinance approving final plat for sanctuary point filing number eight. I second. We have a motion in several seconds. Ms. Hogan, will you take roll? Trustee Unruh? Yes. Trustee Lekind? Yes. Trustee Stevens? Yes. Trustee Clark? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott? Yes. Mayor Wilson? Yes. Trustee Romanello? Yes. That motion passes 7 0. Next item on the agenda ordinance number 02 2021, an ordinance approving the final plat plan development site plan for the UPS distribution center. Ms. Flynn? It's waiting. Okay. Is that? 
Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Okay, the UPS Distribution Center facility is within Falcon Commerce Center Phase 1 Preliminary PD Site Plan. The site is bounded by Squadron Drive to the north and Woodcarver Road to the west and south. It is 16.91 acres in size. The existing zoning. It's part of Falcon Commerce Center Phase 1 approved preliminary PD site plan. The approved preliminary PD site plan indicates area to be developed as commercial. Forest Lakes Metro District will provide both water and wastewater services for all development within Falcon Commerce Center. The existing surrounding uses include Pilot Travel Center, Valero Gas Station, and Pioneer Landscape Centers. The final PD site plan. This facility is 98,290 square feet with the possibility of expanding to the south in the future, and in the future is about 12 to 15 years from now. The proposed uses are warehousing and administrative offices, and now also has a 24-hour guard house. The site also provides adequate parking for now and for the future. Access points. Truck vehicles will access Squadron's Drive two full movement access points, A and B, which you can see on this screen, via Woodcarver Road rather than Terrazzo Drive. Turning movements via Woodcarver Road will be more manageable for truck drivers than turning into Terrazzo Drive from Baptist Road. However, Terrazzo Drive will be a temporary access until Woodcarver Road improvements are made. Currently, Woodcarver Road from the roundabout to Squadron Drive is a county road. The town of Monument is currently in the process of annexing it into the town. The El Paso County Attorney's Office will be providing the town a draft IGA within the week. The developer of Falcon Commerce Center has agreed to make the necessary road improvements to bring this section of Woodcarver Road to the town's roadway standards. Typical business hours are Monday through Friday. For the UPS Brown trucks, from 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m., there will be 100 drivers will leave the site. However, there's no way to tell how many per hours will return from 5 to 8 p.m. The UPS large tractor trailers from midnight to 6 a.m. will have 8 to 10 trucks will arrive. And from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m., about 3 to 5 trucks will leave. Traffic generation analysis was conducted to determine if the UPS heavy truck volume would be an issue. The analysis concluded all turn lane lengths have sufficient storage to accommodate future traffic volumes. At the Baptist Road and I-25 northbound ramp, exceptions include the westbound right and northbound left turn lanes. There is no significant blocking caused by the anticipated northbound queue lengths. However, there's upstream blocking of the pilot travel center car access occurs about 17% of the time, which is about 10 minutes in a given peak traffic hour. The following are the building elevations. This is the north elevation, south elevation, east elevation, west elevation. And these are the list of referrals who reviewed and commented on this project. On December 9, 2020, there was no one from the public who spoke for or against the project. The Planning Commission vote was 5-0 to zero to recommend a approval. The Planning Commission recommends approval of Ordinance 02-2021 Final PD Site Plan for UPS based on the findings that the proposal complies with all standards and criteria for approval with the following condition. No per building permits will be issued until access permits permits are issued by El Paso County or the Town of Monument, whomever has ownership of Woodcarver and Baptist Road. And the applicants are online um, if you have any questions for them as well. It's Brian Weiss and Sergio. Okay, this is a public hearing item, so I will open it up to public comments. Um, Mr. Anderson, do we have anyone wishing to make public comment at this time? Okay. Officer, do we have anybody in the hallway? Thank you. Um, board comments or questions? I have a question. Um, in a non-social distancing scenario, hopefully that will be in the near future, 
How many employees would be, uh, how many people would be employed at this facility? I believe it's 150 um, with um, part-time and full-time employees uh, with different shifts. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, we do have one public comment. Can you pronounce that last name again? Okay. Ms. Fella, did you have a comment you would like to make? Oh, will that impact the trail at all? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Will the building of the facility impact the trail here in Monument? No, there's um, a trail crossing that's already there currently, and it's past Squadron Drive. All right, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Any other public comments? Sperling, you are able to make public comment. If you just connect your audio down at the bottom. Hello. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Ms. Sperling. Um, I was just curious, you know, with the extra, I, I do notice when we do build large buildings in the city that there is a considerable amount of uh, light pollution. Have you guys looked Ms. at Berlin, your audio broke up. Will you please try that again? Certainly. Um, I can you hear me clearly now? Hello. I can hear her. You can hear me. Okay. I just I can. I'm not sure about the board. I'm not sure about the boardroom though. It sounds like we can hear you now. Okay. Will you please repeat? Repeat. Yes, I was just wondering if you all looked into um, what consequences are going to come with such a large building and light pollution. I know that um, building more and more around here, it seems like the night sky disappears a little more for our small town. I, I know it's, you know, of course, people should have jobs, but it's nice to keep our town small and being able to see the stars still. Just wondering if you looked into that at all. Yes, they need to follow the dark sky ordinance um, with their lighting that they have. And it has to be on, it can't be on past a certain time unless it's for, um, if they're open 24 hours and they're not, they're, all, they're not open all day. So their lights will be off at night. Thank you. Yep. And they'll be facing down if they are on. Okay, at this point, I will close the public hearing portion of this item and continue with board discussion. I just I want to say, uh, Trustee Lakine, go ahead. Yeah, well, this distribution center, is it going to be covering the Tri Lakes region? Um, meaning that um, deliveries uh, coming out of this will uh, 
take the place of deliveries that right now are coming out of uh, Denver? They will be, they will still use both Denver and this facility for that. And I believe Sergio can talk more on that. Mr. Anderson, is Sergio connected? Oh, you need to connect to your audio, Sergio. Mayor and trustees, can you hear me now? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so the the question has to do with the uh, areas of service. So the Commerce Center uh, facility covers the uh, Metro Denver area, along with portions of uh, the north uh, northern side of of Englewood. The Englewood facility covers north of Englewood, uh, and then uh, everything uh, towards the southern end around Elizabeth, and then almost towards the northern end of Monument. Okay, the new facility, the services will be extending almost to the uh, southern part of Englewood area, and then cover a large portion of the northern part of Colorado Springs, along with uh, Monument itself. Thank you, Mr. Lekind, does that answer your question? Yes, it does, thank you. Okay, other questions from the board? I just wanna say that having uh, that business here, I think, with that, with that employee count, will help generate the businesses and restaurants that we're talking about wanting to be around here and cause great, uh, good commercial growth, uh, sales tax revenues, and and more uh, focus and and on on our town without a doubt. Okay. If there are no other questions, I'll look for a motion. I make a motion to approve an ordinance approving the final plan development site plan for United Parcel Service Distribution Center Ordinance 02-2021. Second. second. We have a motion and a quick second. Ms. Hogan, will you take roll? Trustee Stevens? Yes. Trustee Lekind? Yes. Trustee Unruh? Yes. Trustee Romanello? Yes. Trustee Clark? Trustee Clark? Yes. Oh, thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott? Yes. Mayor Wilson? Yes. That motion passed 7 0. Ordinance number 032021, ordinance to amend the pet control and dog licensing rules and regulations. Mr. Ricci. Thank you. Um, so, this animal control ordinance will do two things. One, it codifies countywide animal control laws into our town code, and it updates licensing fees to make them match those adopted in the rest of the county. Um, it will not impose any new enforcement or licensing requirements on the town. Fees are collected through veterinarians and humane society. Um, the, the codification, the putting it in our code, uh, was requested by Monument PD and uh, the humane society because there had been some issues with people being able to find the county code that we were adopting by reference. And so they said, can we please put this in the county code so that it's readily available to the citizens of Monument? Um, in the past, we have, like I said, adopted county code rules by reference. Um, this has led to some recent uh, enforcement difficulties with our court um, and access to the code. So we'd ask that uh, it be approved for that purposes. As far as the animal licensing fees, uh, the Humane Society has not raised fees in about a decade and have requested all entities in the county to update their fee schedule. So everybody, um, every town and county government has to pass these individually. And so far, Colorado Springs, unincorporated El Paso County, Fountain and Manitou Springs have all implemented the new fee structure. 
um, animal licensing fees will cause town residents to pay the same amount as other residents within the county and hopefully simplify fee collection. Um, the Humane Society is changing the registration fees, but it's proposing no change in the cost of animal enforcement to the town. For those reasons, we'd recommend approval. Okay, this is a public hearing item, so I'll open it up to the public for any public comments. Do we have anyone wanting to comment waiting in the hallway? Do we have anyone online? Mr. Anderson. Okay, for the time, for the moment, I'll leave public comments, uh, the public hearing portion open, and we'll bring it back to board questions um, and discussion. So the main reason for this was to establish a uniformity throughout the county, is that correct? That is correct. It is to just, it is to create a uniform fee structure and a uniform set of rules that apply across the county with some minor changes to allow us to enforce it in the Monument Municipal Court. Okay, Any anything notable or noticeable that's different from what we're used to, I guess? No, these, these laws, the proposed um, sections for the code are currently contained in the county's rules that we have previously adopted. Okay. I have some questions and so first of all the humane society is a county function correct it is an entity that operates I believe under um, a county grant I believe it is a semi-private organization so when we pay um, the amount we pay them to cover our area then what do the licensee what do the licensees fee go to do, do they take away from what we have to pay so my understanding of the pikes peak humane society budget and how they explained it to uh, us and other entities is that they receive their funding from a variety of sources from adoptions to licensing fees to the enforcement that they charge towns and municipalities for. Um, and so this is an overall getting them to the budget they need to operate, as I understand it. And they are a nonprofit organization? I do believe they are a nonprofit organization. Okay. And just some questions about so, where did we come up with? Are these all based on the county's ordinances? The the fee structure? The entire ordinance. Yes. It is all based on what has been passed by Colorado Springs, El Paso County, Fountain, and Manitou. Why is having a cat different than a dog? That I have not been explained, sir. There's a list of reasons. <laughs> I, I, I do know I do note that cat licensing is optional. I, we we can do research on that if you need us to, sir. And well, so so just to clarify, although not required, any person desiring to license a cat may do so, right? That is correct. The next line says rabies vaccinations are required for all cats and dogs. That is correct. So you're not required to license them, but you're required to vaccinate them. Maybe which you have is, a cat which that's is a part, runner, which I, is I don't know. which is part of the licensing process so as i so you can't license a dog unless it's been vaccinated that but is you correct. can license a cat that hasn't i think you can vaccinate a cat that hasn't been licensed yes if you read that. that's the way the I cat is well. a happy cat <laughs> <laughs> um under 6.04.014 licensing fees, it says these are yearly, so they start whenever you get them, correct? That is correct. 
so why it is license fees shall not be prorated in there does that make any sense so i understand that they do these by calendar year and if you are looking for a longer term they have the option to do um three year i believe and so if there's a concern that you're getting close to the end of a year you could simply buy a, a multi-year instead but that would still be good for three years you wouldn't be buying one for a year and a half that's correct so it can't be it would be good it would be it would, as I understanding, the fee structure is set up so that you are buying per calendar year. So if you're going to your vet on December 31st, you may pay for this year and then next year. Be the choice of how you want to do the licensing. Okay. And why are they not transferable? That I do not know. I don't, I don't know why they've written it that way. I believe it is a paperwork issue transferring licenses between animals. If and owners. <clears throat> so 018 dangerous dog prohibited. If we're contracting with the humane society to cover our animal needs, why would it be up to a peace officer to decide if an animal is dangerous? Wouldn't that be up to the humane society? The peace officer would be the individual who called in the Humane Society. So they would so they would decide or the Humane Society would decide? They so um our peace officers have the ability under our code to decide that that you have a dangerous animal. And we've left it we've left that with our police officers so that they can enforce all of the laws within the town. And that's the way it is currently. That is the way it is currently. And then their recommendation would then go to Society, what you're saying, based on your um, so then uh, the peace officer would then take the recommendation of the humane society based on the steps that what mayor is describing. Is that correct? So my understanding of the way this is going to work with it comes with with uh, vicious or um, problem animals is that your police have the ability to write those tickets and make that determination independently of the Humane Society. The Humane Society would be providing the animal control resources that the town does not have at the request of the peace officer. So we do all the work unless we need them to pick up the animal. Well, generally speaking, as I understand it, um, if there is a vicious dog call, they're both showing up. What about vicious cats? I have not run into any of those yet, though I do know they exist. I was going to say, uh, I, I've got a question on the, the title of this section, Dangerous Dog Prohibited. Is this based on breed or is this based on action that a dog has taken? Can you repeat that, Trustee Lekind? The section title says Dangerous Dogs Are Prohibited. Are prohibited. Is this based on a breed that's being set by some other entity, or is this based on the action that the animal has taken to deem them dangerous? It is based upon the actions of the animal. Okay, thank you. So there's no discrimination on breed based following on Mr. Kind's question. Is that what I'm hearing? That is correct. Okay. In fact, I will say that in the past, we have had chihuahuas cited as dangerous dogs. Um, and they're one of the more dangerous ones. They are one of the more dangerous ones. Okay. Um, any other questions by the board? It, just, just to kind of wrap up, I think what we're asking, uh, to you. Is this making any significant protocol or cost difference to the town at all? None. Okay. And the consumer just gets their rabies fees raised. That is correct. Actually, it's their dog licensing fees raised, but yes. Also, their cat fee raised as well if they choose to rate, uh, license their cat. Uh, Mr. Anderson, did we have any other follow up comments from the public? Okay, at this point, I will close the public hearing portion of this ordinance. And if there is no further discussion or questions from the board, I'll look for a motion. 
I'll move to approve ordinance number 03 2021 an ordinance to amend the pet animal control at dog licensing rules and regulations regarding fees. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Hogan. Trustee Unruh. Yes. Trustee Clark. Yes. Trustee Romanello. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott. Yes. Trustee Stevens. Yes. Mayor Wilson. No. Trustee Lekind. Yes. That motion passes five one or six one. At this point, we are going to discuss, uh, continue our last discussion on a resolution supporting business um, and COVID regulations. I'm going to just open this up to the board to discuss. I know we've all gotten uh, quite the handful of emails in regards to this, many of which did not seem to follow our previous discussion, but um, I think it's we should discuss this and decide what our plan is going to be on this. Yeah, let me, uh, I may just uh, talk about, since I've uh, already written the first draft and I published, uh, not published it, I uh, submitted it to the attorney and town manager uh, in December. Uh, it, I personally believe that the idea that one business is considered essential and another business is not considered essential is discriminatory. And so what I proposed in my resolution is that whatever, that we are basically going to be a sanctuary city or town for, you know, for the, uh, for businesses, which means that all, all businesses would, you know, not be discriminated this week, uh, this holiday season, I was watching football. They were in a huddle and they were not six feet apart. I was shocked and not a single one of them were wearing, wearing a mask. So clearly it's this, that's done for economic reasons. And if they can do it for a football team, they can certainly do it for businesses. So I think, uh, you know, it is essential to the, uh, to the individual that owns that business and it's essential to the employees that are being employed and being paid. So I think it's very, so I'm not discriminating. I don't know where this Garfield, uh, I haven't seen that, uh, the Garfield uh, resolution, uh, that seemed to be a big, theme, if you will, in the emails, but I've never seen that. And uh, basically this, uh, this resolution is looking to address all businesses that we will not be, you know, we will allow you to open, but if, you know, but you need to be responsible uh, in, a, in, in a responsible manner. And I think the citizens of Monument can do that. Uh, not only should the patron, not only should the businesses act, in, you know, in a responsible manner, because the two restaurants can be completely different. One I've been into with, is as small as a closet, and you'd be very nervous in there. And the other restaurants are huge, and they can certainly accommodate more for more people in there. So, uh, so we're looking at that, and also it, it take comes down to individual responsibility. If an individual, whether you're going to an essential business or a non-essential business, if you're walking into a store and you feel it's overcrowded at the time you're going in at that particular point, you should turn around, and especially if you're in a high risk category. If you're not in a high risk category, then I would not think that would be as much of a concern for you. But if you're in a high risk category, then you should turn around and wait until another time when it's not as busy. So I, the gist of where I'm going with this resolution is it applies to all businesses and that uh, the, the, the crux of it is also that individuals of the town of Monument should act in a responsible manner. We're not asking everybody to throw their masks away and, and ignore CDC guidelines. Uh, but what we are asking for is that businesses continue to operate in a responsible manner and individuals that you know, and one of the things I said in the whereas, which is the beginning portion of the resolution, is that um, <clears throat> that the governor has no idea, nor does the county health department, or nor does the state health department have any idea what your risk factors are. Only you as an individual know what those risk factors are. So if you're in a low risk group, then you're obviously not gonna be as concerned as if you're in a high risk group. 
And I think each individual needs to take that responsibility on themselves to act in a manner that's appropriate for their health situation. So that's kind of a, my rundown on that. Mr. Uh, Mayor Wilson, may I ask um, Trustee Stevens a question? Please. Trustee Stevens, did you did you send everyone that resolution that you created? Or just no, I have not sent everyone. I was uh, I was not clear on the sunshine rules as to how many people I could send it out to. So uh, I did send it to uh, you know to our town manager and. Uh, you know, we can, and I, there may be some tweaks here that are coming up and we're talking about doing a workshop. So if we'd want to bring that up for a workshop, then I think that's appropriate as well. I think at the instruction of the board, the staff could send that out to the board. Okay. And so I, I, I would like to tell you, trustee Stevens, that I fully agree with all businesses being open and individual responsibility. And you stated that very well. I did want to talk a little bit about the, um, the Garfield County Commissioner's re uh, resolution. They had, um, it's quite extensive, very, very lengthy, um, but the most compelling part of that uh, resolution is that they placed indoor sit down dining, non critical retail, gyms and recreation into the public health department's critical business category under the county health regulations so that the businesses would not be shut down. So I found that very fascinating that um, we could actually have the authority to amend and review the public health department's definition guidelines and processes because it looks to me like Garfield County Commissioner's action in passing their resolution proved uh, through legal channels that it would hold up in a court of law. So I was thinking that the board could consider the Garfield County Commissioner's resolution as a blueprint somewhat in this one area to make uh, a monument resolution, making a similar move, but only eliminating all those uh, breakdowns of different businesses and just say to include all businesses. Let them all be moved to the critical business category under county health regulations in the uh, resolution so that um, in the future should other situations arise uh, we would have protected our small businesses for generations to come uh, can i can i say something go ahead uh, so i i agree with trustee stevens and trustee clark i think it would also be important to add some form of uh, indicator that the county slash Department of Health and or the state needs to be responsible enough to provide the town accurate numbers going forward as to infection rates, um, inoculation rates of any vaccine that's done. And I'm not talking about 80132. I am talking about the town of Monument specific. If they want us to follow their guidelines, they need to give us real data and not something that's made up for a, re a region that does not necessarily impact us directly. Trustee Lakind, I think that's a, a wonderful thing. Do you think we could actually get real numbers? No, but <laughs> I don't think so either. I think that uh, the, I think that they don't have accurate numbers and I think it's really important that we all step up as a board and protect our small businesses and our, 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 our residents, our citizens, protect their constitutional rights. They have a right to work under the constitution and no disease or pandemic or other emergency crisis ever supersedes our constitutional provisions for our citizens. So keeping this these businesses open is vital to Monument. We need them just as much as they need us. And I would like to do my utmost to make sure that every single business remains open in the resolution that we pass. Well, I definitely agree with that. I don't even think we should discriminate and say this is essential and this is non essential because even that dividing line uh, is very arbitrary. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, the football team that we saw, they uh, evidently got some type of, you know, while they're business owners that are being arrested in California, the football players are able to get on a field and, you know, because they're not classified. Oh.
Yeah, <laughs> dog pile, exactly. So the point is, is that this process has become very arbitrary. And what's uh, apparent to me is a state of emergency was designed uh, to handle natural disasters. But when a state, so it should last for two, three, maybe a month, uh, two, three weeks, or maybe a month. But when a state of emergency becomes uh, in perpetuity, it becomes a state of tyranny because there are extraordinary measures put in place to allow the governor to act in a real emergency. Now, there are people that say, yeah, it is a real emergency. Uh, for you know, If you're in a high risk category, maybe you feel that, but so you have the ability to control and limit your, your how much you wanna go as an individual. So it's not like a flood or an earthquake. You have no control that when, when a flood's coming, you can't just, you know, the best you can do is just get out of the way. So I think we, I agree with trustee Clark that this has gone out of, has gotten out of control that uh, I don't think we even need to declare who's essential and who's not. We just say all businesses monument is a sanctuary town uh, for businesses. So if you're a business in monument, we're not going to turn you into the health department or anything like that. We will, uh, we want to you to be able to operate as long as everybody's willing to, uh, you know, operate in a reasonable manner. And, uh, you know, and Hey, Stevens, I could not agree with you more. You, this was just an excellent way to put that. I totally agree. I think that your um, resolution efforts have, are to be commended. I also think that it's really, really important, even if we make it a sanctuary um, town, to include this one little provision to change the public health officials' authority to hurt our businesses in the future. So if I could just suggest that we include that, that would make me a very happy woman and I'm sure it would make all the other uh, businesses in town happy as well. Okay, if you can send me the language, we can put that in and we'll have to talk about, it. I don't know if we have the authority to regulate, but here's the good news. I talked to County Commissioner elect uh, Geithner and she's in the same camp as we are. And uh, she's even talked to the county uh, health department and they are not actively closing any business right now because of this. So I think we can with uh, Commissioner Williams and Commissioner Geithner and all we need is one more, I think just to get on board, I think we can at least get their buy-in and, and, uh, and just say, hey, this is what we're doing. And uh, I think uh, we can you know, protect our businesses in that manner. I, I agree, and I think that acting locally here and being uh, – this is bigger than us, and it, us being a light here, a beacon of hope here uh, up to the county, the state, and ultimately to the country, boldness begets boldness and courage begets courage. What we started last week and what I saw in the emails, unfortunately, most of the emails came in after the OCN came out, and thank God for the paper, but it would have been great had people seen this at, and been paying attention right away instead of a three-week delay. Um, I think we need to move on this as quickly as possible. Um, I really do. I'm not saying that we need to rush into something, but we need to be expedient about it uh, at the I, same I time. Agree with, I, I agree with you, Trustee um, uh, Romanello. Speed is of the essence. We need to uh, minimize and eradicate the hardship, the financial hardship our small businesses are, are enduring right now. I, I heard today that it's going to be two more years of lockdowns. We really do have to do something very quickly. And I agree with you. Thank you for that forward. So then I would ask this then and, and get more feedback is doing a workshop this coming Monday and then voting on something on the following meeting even fast enough, or do we need to make it more timely than that? What is everybody else's opinion to work on this? Can, can we hold on to that Sorry. Um, sure. and continue with comments? Um, Trustee Unruh, do you have any comments you'd like to make on this topic? Um, I just want to make it clear that I full, fully agree with um, everything that's been stated. I don't think I bring anything new to the table that hasn't been mentioned already. Um, but I think it is of the essence to make sure, I mean, no, no business owner should be looking for, to the governor for permission to open their business. That's their livelihood and that's their right. And this is the United States of America. So, to see us progressing on that is definitely concerning, and I am I'm, I'm very excited to see that we're stepping up and um, putting something in place to protect these businesses. 
Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott. Uh, yes. So as you, for, unfortunately for many of the people that might be listening online, did not attend the last Board of Trustees meeting where Trustee Romanello um, uh, presented his viewpoint, followed by Trustee Lakind and myself. And um, as you know, and as published in the OCN, I was quite emotional about this topic as a small business owner myself in northern Colorado Springs because there was no property available in Monument when I started my business um, or I would be in Monument. Um, this is really a sore subject of mine to have somebody else define what's essential and non-essential. That's essentially stating whether or not you as a human being are essential or not based on your job function or the company that you own or have founded. And that absolutely, as I said, is absurd. So I am 100% on board with moving as fast as possible, as Trustee Romanello has stated, to make sure that we get what we need in place to open up all businesses in the town of Monument. But I would like to add that I have received emails, and I believe the entire board has received emails, a couple of them related to the being responsible as we move forward with this. And the terminology sanctuary town, I think may have been a negative connotation related to COVID for certain people who have emailed me and I've responded individually to. And I would like everybody to know that we moving forward with wanting to open up businesses so that people can earn a livelihood and we can consider everybody essential in this town that um, we will do this responsibly as trustee Stevens has already alluded to. So I just wanted to clarify that because there were some objections to this in the emails that we have received no, we're not going to go off willy nilly and take off all restrictions as far as masks, et cetera, are concerned. We're going to be responsible, but we're going to allow the businesses in the town of Monument to earn a living, employ their employees, and maintain a livelihood. And the sooner we do this, the better off we all will be. Thank you, Bill. Trustee Elliott. That was just wonderful to hear. And I, I agree with Trustee Elliott, or Premier Pro Tem Elliott, that we should do this quickly. We Even if we have to call a special meeting to get it done, let's get it done quickly because these businesses are hanging on by a thread and everyone in this town is essential. So building on what Mayor Pro Tem Elliott <clears throat> spoke about, um, I would like to play devil's advocate for a moment. If we use terminology like sanctuary town, are we going to give some of our smaller businesses the wrong impression that they are covered under the town while their liquor license or their food license is held by the state and we do and we have nothing that stops the state from walking in and taking their liquor license? So moving forward, I think we need to be aware of things like that that we don't control and whether we enforce or not, that does not mean other agencies won't enforce. Mayor Wilson, that's why I suggested that change to the uh, definitions category in the, in the public health department's guidelines. I think that was what we need to protect the the businesses the most effective way in the future from those from those types of assaults. Can okay. I read it to you again? I th I think we should all look at I think we all got the email from Lisa Green that has the Homeland Security uh, formal writing on it and we should include that in our um, workshop discussion that talks about leaving the responsibility to the towns and cities on how they handle things. I, my understanding of that is that was up basically guidelines and it still left the state authority above 
the city and state authority. I felt that was a very misplaced memo to go with. I thought the support was great. I felt that that memo was not added, was not supportive of what we were trying to accomplish. Um, Mr. Ricci, I sent that memo to you also. Did you have any feedback on that? My feedback in regard to all of this is is very much along the lines of what you indicated with the devil's advocacy here. Um, liquor licenses are controlled by the state, um, and they are, of course, a source of revenue for many of the businesses that have them. Also, um, definitions of essential businesses, that is determined by the county. What, one of the things we may want to consider putting in a resolution is a request to the county and or the state to allow the town to regulate this in, this uh, type of thing locally. Right now, I do not see a, a really effective method by which the town can regulate this in a way that is cannot be ignored by the county and the state. Okay. We could declare so essentially we could declare a business absolutely essential say we believe they should be opened up and the county says nope the county health regulation says blank and it controls that's why i think this this provision um that i was talking about with the garfield county language would so protect the businesses from any further assault and i'll be happy to send that to the attorney for his review Yes, please send that. Many thanks. Us. Yeah, I mean, for me, just the idea that one business is essential and the other business is not essential just doesn't wash with me. And I, once we go down that road to say, okay, you're good. And like I said, it's discriminatory and it's being delegated out uh, in a rather arbitrary manner. So I think, um, you know, I understand that we need to protect our citizens from now, it, there's two ways. That, well, let me ask you this. How does Denver get away with calling themselves a sanctuary city and ignoring federal immigration law? You know, I mean, if they, if they can get away with that, and that's one of the first things I put at the top of my resolution, whereas Denver has declared themselves a sanctuary city, they've set the precedence. Therefore, you know, we're going to continue, you know, and so why is it that they have the right to ignore the law and we don't? or whatever this rule is. If the law, now here's the thing, I'm not calling for a rebellion, I'm calling for a, a, a pushback to what is illegally being done. Okay, so to me, civil disobedience is in line of, this is the way the law should be implemented. And the current way that's being implemented is unconstitutional. It's uh, the people have the right to work, people have a right to supply, to feed their family, and uh, and so it's based on a moral issue and it's based on a constitutional issue. And so we're saying basically that, no, we're not wrong. You're the one that's wrong and we're calling it out is my position. So uh, to go with, um, to address Denver, um, I am in no way defending Denver uh, and their actions related to be, being a sanctuary city. What I will say is my understanding of Denver's position is that they have elected not to cooperate or enforce or assist in the enforcement of federal law. That's the way that they've worked on it. Now, the town of Monument could say something very similar, which is we uh, will not cooperate with county or state enforcement of violations of COVID-19 restrictions or the state of emergency orders. Uh, that's that's in line, same sort of same sort of activity. Um, the reality is that when Denver does that, there's very little that they don't do as far as they don't call the local, they don't call the federal government uh, when they pick up somebody, when they find out that they may be an illegal alien, they don't do that. Um, again, they don't have to make that call and if they don't, they risk um, penalties, which I, many cities have incurred in loss of grants and funding. So that's the that's the trade off that happens is the power of the purse with the federal government. Um, and as far as um, the Garfield County resolution, I believe that's I'd love to see that. But again, what what the town really needs is an enforcement mechanism to uh, to declare these businesses to be essential and all of them to be essential. Um, 
I would agree that an attack under an equal protection clause argument is probably a very good way to go and has worked in the past on this particular issue. Okay. Uh, but to your point, um, with the federal government possibly providing fines, the tyrant in Denver could very well take the businesses, the business licenses, thus the livelihood of our businesses if uh, we decide to opt out of following those guidelines. The state has the ability to take liquor licenses. That is a state function. Um, I'm unaware of how they would, in a short term, uh, take away a business license, as that is a Secretary of State function. Uh, the governor would not necessarily have that ability to do that. Um, as far as uh, Secretary of business State licenses, will, will fall that's in line the county. with the governor. We we know the Secretary of State what side she sits on, and she will instantaneously close down a business if the governor tells her to. It, well, a, a restaurant can't make any money on a liquor license if it's closed anyway. Okay, this is about taking a stand. This is not about about. This isn't about doing everything. This is about taking a stand so others will take a stand that they can't stop us all. We need to make a decision at some point and draw a damn line. Here, here. I totally agree. Before we um, set a workshop date, I would like to ask the board if we can have a few minutes of public comment on this topic. Um, traditionally, we we don't have public comment for board discussion items, although we do allow public comment, and we do have some people here and more than usual online. So if the board agrees, I would like to open it up to public comment. I agree. Agree. Okay. Um, is anyone here present in person would like to make public comment? Sir? And Ms. Hogan, due to the fact that we are going to try to keep this to 15 minutes, will you please put the three minute timer on the clock for public comment? Or have yours going? And how long did you say? Three minutes. My question was not a part of that three minutes, was it? Now you're down to a minute and a half. No. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. My name is Danny Brista. Um, thanks for allowing us to come in here and speak. I really appreciate all you guys putting in your time and effort and energy to, to do something about this situation. Uh, I was a little nervous when I first got here, not sure, you know, what I would hear from everybody. I'm very pleased to hear a lot of the things that I am hearing. Um, I know that hearing, you know, talking about constitution, talking about us all being essential, talking about um, devil's advocate, you know, it's very clear when we're talking about liquor licenses being taken, we're talking about a specific type of business and that is damaging. Um, I did hear that over 10% of small businesses in Colorado have already shut down just in the last, you know, nine to 10 months. That's unacceptable that we are acting like saving lives is okay, but destroying livelihoods at the same time, you know, that that's okay as well. And it isn't, it's unacceptable. Um, is it safe to say that everybody on the board of trustees, you know, takes an oath to stand up to not only the federal constitution, but to state constitutions? Is that safe to say? Yes. Um, is it also safe to say that uh, a lot of people on the board of trustees, do you earn some sort of revenue or a paycheck by the state? No. Maybe just the mayor? Um, no. Okay. Um, well, that's that's refreshing to hear at the same time as well. Okay, um, so the First Amendment provides that Congress uh, will make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting its free exercise. 
It protects freedom of speech, the press, assembly, and the right to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Obviously, that's what we're here to do, right? There needs to be a redress of grievances happening right now. And I am also happy to hear that you are wanting to move this along quicker. We're behind the curve on this. You know, I have close friends that that I've made over these last eight to nine months, and I'll call them close because they're all business owners just like myself. Even though mine is online and I'm not necessarily being affected, it's unacceptable for me to see the ones being affected um, and, and being, you know, discriminated against. And, you know, they're slowly just falling to the wayside. They don't have any more time. So remember that, you know, some people might have some time. These small restaurant owners have none left. Um, and it's lucky that they're even holding on. Um, the other thing I want to remind everybody too: the Ninth Amendment, uh, it, it, in simple terms, it states that all laws not in the Constitution are of the people and not the government. So we do need to stand up and we need to push back. Um, I'm sure I've already gone over my time. Um, I, I could go all night and talk about this. So thank you for your time your comments um <clears throat> anyone else here that would like to make comment miss miss hayes terry hayes um i want to first say i absolutely agree with every you guys i'm it's very frustrating to me when my staff member comes into me and says, I was just at Costco over the weekend. Why the heck aren't our businesses able to stand, stay open? Because it is packed and it's frustrating to me. And she's a new staff member and she is just so behind these businesses. But I wanna give a little bit of caution. Um, first, I want you to know that our El Paso County is on our side. El Paso County has been working extremely hard and against the state. And you have to realize that when we, they go against the state, this is, they are going against their boss. So it's harder to do than what you might think it would be. And they are trying, they've been asking for our businesses to be able to be opened up at 50%, our restaurants specifically, our retail is currently at 50%. And also the entities in Colorado Springs have been working really hard. Every entity in the state every chamber in the state. We have um, meetings with, with state um, staff about this and they're getting pressure, not just from our county, they're getting pressure in the entire state. And I wanna credit the fact that we are at orange right now because of this. We know our numbers, when they first started those levels, we are still way above that orange level, but yet they agreed to go to orange. So state pressure is working. It's not working fast, but it is working. I am actually, most people I talked to were surprised that he did it this fast starting today versus saying, I'm gonna wait to see if there's any pushback from and any number increase due to the holidays. So I'm very happy that he did not do that. So I just want you guys to know that, that I have not been I've done a very good job of communicating to you guys on we will do better that there's a lot of meetings I'm a part of and there's a lot of things going on. The county commissioners are doing what they can. They also have no authority over our um, county Department of Health. So it's a lot of it is the levels of authority that are happening. Loveland tried this, the county did this and um, or the city of Loveland, I'm sorry. It's not, um, and I spoke with the chamber president afterwards. It was probably about three weeks afterwards. And they said, so <laughs> how's this working for you guys? And she said 60 to 70 restaurants signed on to say that they were going to defy state orders. By three weeks, the vast majority had recalled their statements because they basically said to the state, we're gonna ignore you, you have no authority. So by doing this, you're basically flipping off the state and the state then turns has no choice. Well, they do have a choice, but in their mind, they have no choice. They can't let that happen. So then they sent letters to all these restaurants and they did not, um, they did not, they got their liquor license threatened. So what I would ask is in this resolution, 
in the workshop. I think a workshop is a fantastic idea. Look at the legalities of this. The one thing I want to avoid is Monument's a very small town in the entire state of Colorado. So right now we fly under the radar. We know you are right, Ron, that they are not shutting businesses down. The only time you're gonna see El Paso County shut a business down here locally is if they stand in front of the El Paso County offices and go, we're staying open regardless of what you say. It's attitude. There's a way to work with them. They are not doing it if you just are B. And that's all I'm gonna say on that because I don't wanna say anything else on that. But I just wanna get the point that we don't wanna target on our restaurants because Right now we fly under the radar. Let's have the county try to do something on a bigger scale than Monument do something just by themselves. Because as a county, being the largest, most populous county we have in the state, I think our county commissioners can make a bigger statement. I'm sorry, am I out of time? Okay, sorry, that is it. Thank you. Um, anyone else here that would like to make comment? Mr. Anderson, do we have anybody online that would like to make comment? Everybody, um, I will be adding you as panelists, and as soon as you have the ability to your audio, do so so we can try to keep uh, everybody who is Drummond, thank you. Am I mispronouncing anybody's name? I apologize. Um, for our online uh, guest, please try to keep it as brief as possible and not repeat other comments um, just so we can keep this moving forward is Mr. Anderson is the per first person. Mr. Drummond, you're welcome to speak. Do we have anybody else connected at the time? Okay, Mr. Drummond, will you please hold a moment and we will go to the next speaker. Uh, what was the name? Ms. Vela, will you please go ahead? Uh, yes, um, I'd like to comment that um, Smaller local control is extremely important. I agree with uh, Lori Clark on a lot of her statements. And I believe that's why Mayor Wilson has stated um, on agreeing with raising dog licensing fees solely based off if we were going to copy what other towns are doing, because um, it's important that we stay small and individual. Large government solutions usually do not serve citizens very well. Um, anyways, if the town of Monument can detach themselves from the health department, they absolutely should. I. Um, I spoke in front of the county commissioners a few months ago, and that was one of their major holdups in being able to um, have any leeway or, or do anything individual was the health department. And I will tell you this, speaking in front of them and asking them questions, they don't know half of the connections and rules that they have with the health department. They're very uninformed on that. So for us, I'd like to see a plan of action for this um, posted on townofmonument.org as far as what we can do to detach ourselves from health department regulations or um, go around them in a way, um, that would, I would think that would be great to be spearheaded by trustee Lori Clark, because she seems to kind of hit the nail on the head with that one. And that's my comment. Thank you. Uh, is Mr. Drummond connected now? Mr. Drummond, go ahead. Mr. Drummond, will you make sure you are not muted on your end? OK. 
Okay, we will go to the next one due to some technical difficulty. Um, who else do you have, Mr. Anderson? Are any of them connected currently? Linda, Lindsay, and Megan, I have connected all of you. Feel free to connect your audio to be able to speak. Please let me know when their audio is connected or one of them's audio is connected. Uh, Miss Late, will you please make your comments? Is she showing muted on her end? Can you hear me now, guys? Yes, please go ahead. So thank you to um, the mayor and the trustees for the opportunity to speak this evening. Um, my husband and I own um, a food service business, Wesley Owens Coffee and Cafe in Monument. We're actually in the Monument postcode, um, but we're also a permanent residence of the town of Monument. Um, we moved here from the UK and it was a real joy and a privilege to realize that uh, we lived and worked alongside uh, neighbors and friends who also own businesses in the area and who are part of this local community. Um, obviously, over the last year, we've watched these same friends and neighbors struggle to maintain their businesses as we have all dealt with the ever-changing rules of COVID. We, too, have struggled to keep up with the changes according to um, the latest regulations, accommodate those costs, and obviously keep our staff employed. Um, I am grateful and blessed to say that so far we are succeeding in continuing to keep open. Um, however, others are not so fortunate, and this Russian roulette model that's obviously offered by the governor's office is leaving our businesses and our, therefore our neighbors and our friends floundering. Um, I'm so pleased to hear how committed our trustees and mayor are to getting the businesses up and running um, and um, how committed you are to doing that so swiftly as well. Um, we are legal aliens in this country. We are not citizens. Um, and so that has always been a challenge for us because some of the legal ramifications you mentioned could apply to us and perhaps others as well. Um, so I would like you to consider looking at um, the way Garfield County have done what they have done, um, having successfully passed um, a resolution that's allowed them to act differently um, and declare businesses essential, uh, which means that it has limited their scope somewhat. Um, quite simply, it's obvious that the reason we want local trustees and commissioners and mayors is because the centralized governance is not practical. Um, and so we want to see, okay. we want to see um, our homes and businesses um, not being determined by, you know, far removed individuals. Um, so I, I agree with everything you've said in terms of nobody needs a mandate to stay at home if that is the most appropriate thing for them. Um, but equally, I don't believe I should need a mandate to operate my business. Um, so we really do think it's time for the monument residents and our conscientious business owners to decide for ourselves what is um, appropriate within reasonable concerns. Um, as foreigners, we chose to come to this country and especially this town. Um, and now seems, as you have mentioned rightly, a very good time to draw a line um, and confirm that monument businesses are essential and not subject to the whims of these far removed individuals. Uh, your constitutional documents support this approach and therefore you in making these decisions. And I just urge you all to act with courage and pass uh, the appropriate resolutions so that you can be a beacon and you can be an example to others around you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Anderson, next. Who do we have next? Okay. 
Mr. Drummond, if you'd like to come off mute. Okay, I'm available. Go ahead, Can please. You hear me? Yes. Good evening, uh, Mayor Don Wilson and the Board of Trustees. We are so excited about all the work you do for the Town of Monument, and we're so grateful for your hard efforts. Um, as a resident of the Monument for the last 18 years and being a business person in this area for the last 18 years, um, we've had struggles this year. So I just to give a heads up, I, uh, I'm the founder and chairman of the board of the Palmer Divide Soccer Club. And what we do is we encourage, support, train, and coach kids in the game of soccer. That was severely de devastated this year because of the COVID-19 and the restrictions put upon us. We also own a company called Dar Supply. And 90% of our customers are restaurants, bars, gyms, churches, etc. So we are an essential company. You know what? We support non-essential companies, according to the governor. So it was a tough year. Okay? So it's not just non-essential. It's also essential that it's suffering. So you know what? We should all be essential. We should all get opened up. And we should carry on because there is no scientific information that states that COVID starts in restaurants, gyms, churches, etc. And I applaud you all for looking at this resolution. It is against the Constitution of the United States of America to um, be affected by these executive orders from our governor. And we need to start standing up and we need to start protecting the citizens of the town of Monument and the businesses of the town of Monument, and we need to get up and running. And uh, it is, I'm just going to tell you, or you, or the town of trustees, you need to step up and you just need to go towards the El Paso County Commissioners and just say, hey, we're not going to stand for this anymore. We are sick and tired of the governor suppressing our community and we're sick and tired of not being able to support our residents because that's what we hired you for was to support the, the businesses and the community thank you very much for your time and i appreciate you all very much cheers thank you um is there anyone left mr anderson Ms. Davis, if you would like to unmute, please go ahead with your statement. Ms. Davis, you came off mute and went right back on. There we are. Um, go ahead. As owner of Baptist Farm Grill, along with my husband up there in Monument, um, as well as the one in Briargate, it's it's very reassuring just really quick to, to know that you all feel this way. And I did not attend the last meeting. So to know that you all are working on something is wonderful. Um, you know, I've been working very closely with Deanna Johnson, which I don't know if she's a part of this, owner of Black Horse Bistro, the lawsuit she filed um, against the governor. And it's nice to see that things are going the right way. Um, you know, I would like to continue to come up with ways or help you all find ways. I have had, um, actually, the ATF came into my restaurant down in Color Springs, uh, my gastro pub to check my liquor license one night. Um, on the same night, there were seven other restaurants in Color Springs that were given warnings for being open. So while we all say Monument falls under the radar, we're not super far away from that. And I just want to make everybody be aware um, that that can happen. While there was only one restaurant that was shut down, everybody else was given warnings. Um, and I just wanted to ask a quick question to all of you. Have you 
consider the five star program or maybe coming up with variations to that? So um, we will get into that here in a momentarily. Okay. Okay, great. I will stay in and listen to that part of it, but I would just like to say thank you and reach out that you have my support. And if I can, as a business owner, help in any way, I am there. Thank you. Um, it appears we have more people joining on. We are going to have to, I'm okay with giving it another five minutes if the board agrees. We will do five more minutes of public comment. Uh, our apologies as a board if we don't get to everyone, but we do have a full regular agenda also. So, uh, Mr. Anderson, will you let me know the next person that was? Ms. Drummond, would you please go ahead and speak? Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, first of all, let me just say we are all essential. Period, exclamation point, five exclamation points. The government has no right to determine who is essential. And as my husband spoke, our business is essential, but we um, serve companies that are not, that were considered non-essential, and that's just bullshit. And um, I want to very much say that I agree with what you guys have been saying, and um, especially the part about this pandemic is not an emergency. I agree. If it was, it would have been a two to three week thing. And and now they're just taking over our lives and it needs to stop. And the other thing is the way that the, the news and the government, and I know you guys have nothing to do with this, are brainwashing everybody with their little messages everywhere. And it all needs to stop. And we need to all be essential and we need to all be able to live our lives. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we will take two more. Or Dewey's. Mr. Anderson. Uh, Mr. Phillips, go ahead. Ms. Sperling, go ahead. Hello, hear me okay? Yes. Awesome. Uh, I just want to tell you guys, thank you so much for looking into this matter. I fully support all of you passing something as soon as possible to open up all of our amazing businesses here in town fully and without restriction. Um, you know, I, I know you guys are hearing this over and over. Um, I just, I just want you to know that we're behind you 100%, whatever we need to do to help you get this moving along, let us know. And, um, yeah, I just, I, I want our town to be a beacon of what the rest of the state is supposed to be doing. So thank you so much. Thank you. And one more, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Phillips. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. All right, well, first of all, thank you very much. My wife and I and our family moved here 21 years ago and uh, love our community and love uh, being a part of Monument. I wanna thank you for all that you guys are doing. Um, I know some constitutional provisions have been made note of. I just wanted to cite the 14th Amendment says no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. I think that's very applicable to this issue of essential versus non-essential. It says no state can deny to any person 
they cannot choose my reading of that constitutional provision. They cannot choose which are essential and which are not. They must provide equal protection under the law. Now, I, I don't think by taking a very firm position that we're, you know, snubbing our nose at the governor or telling, you know, tell him to pound sand. We're simply taking a firm position and saying, this is where we stand. And I appreciate the conversation that you've had. I appreciate uh, the, the deliberateness of what you're doing. But I just would strongly encourage you to understand as con I would consider you constitutional officers, uh, constitutional representatives. And the Constitution provides you with a very strong position to hold to regarding this. The state cannot do, in the reading of the Equal Protection Clause, they cannot do what they're doing. So, again, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, anything that we can do to help, please let us know. Thank you. Um, for this, for the time being, I'm going to end this public comment portion. We will have our regular public comment portion towards the end of the meeting if anyone would like to stay on for that. In the meantime, if you do have your hand up to make comment, please take it down and then put it back up when we get to the regular public comment portion of the meeting. Uh, at this time, I would like to ask Mr. Foreman and uh, Possibly Miss Hayes also to for some feedback on where we are <clears throat> on the five star program that the county is pursuing. Okay, so the county had a special meeting last week and decided to go ahead with the five star program. Uh, several, almost every town in uh, the county of El Paso uh, has signed off on this and given letters of support to uh, the county for the five star certification program. Uh, we will be meeting twice a week as of today. We'll start meeting twice a week to implement this program and to get approval from the state to implement this program. So, uh, like you said, Mr. Stevens, this is not going to be a program that uh, is for one business and not for the other. This is going to be for every business that uh, applies for this certification. And so we are working hard to get this program off the ground, but I'm not going to tell you that it's going to be in effect tomorrow. It, okay. it is going to take some time for this to take effect. So, I'm sorry. Mark. Trustee Clark, go ahead. I'm sorry for interrupting, I, Mayor Wilson. I didn't realize you're going to talk. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of lost at what Mr. Foreman is saying. Can he, can he say it again? Um, well, let's start with. Can you give us, uh, and maybe Ms. Hayes, can, can you give us a brief overview of what the five star program is? Well, you start and then I'll tell you. Hi, thank you. Can you start um, again? But please? it's a start. And to me, it's something that allows some businesses to get open while we continue to fight for a bigger opening. Um, I, I'm curious because I last I saw publicly, they said no. El Paso County said no to the five star program. So I didn't realize that they were going to say yes to it. Um, they are claiming that it is very onerous. I will tell you, and I would like to challenge El Paso County if they're going to do this. Douglas County got 50 restaurants certified within three days of their starting. So I do think if they're going to do this, I think they need to just do it and not drag it out for weeks until we do it, because by that time, it's gonna be a moot point. So if other counties can get businesses and restaurants certified, um, when it was at Mesa County started this, their Chamber of Commerce is the one that went out and did a lot of the certifications. And we have already told the county, as well as all the chambers in the county that we will volunteer our time to get this done. It's not gonna be just staff, it's not gonna be, it's like this is a group effort and we wanna help get this done. So I think from your guys' standpoint, you definitely should push the county that this should be done sooner rather than later. So, you know, I think, um, you know, in talking to Amy Folsom, the uh, county administrator today, uh, they were looking at hiring third party uh, inspection group and the county paying for that. 
uh, to come in and get this done quicker. Now, I think that'll, like, like you said, some of the ideas that we're talking about that other counties have done is using citizens to do this also, not just staff, but using the Chamber of Commerce, other citizens to go in. We can actually even do this via video. We don't have to be present. Uh, the business owner can video what the improvements that they've made to meet the state requirements for the five star program. And also one of the things that everybody's concerned about is the ventilation requirements. And we've been um, guaranteed that those ventilation requirements can be met by opening windows and doors. Okay, so Trustee Clark, in order to explain um, the I, I think I, I think I, I think I got the idea. This is the same program that uh, the five star program that came out from the uh, governor's office. Yes. Correct. I, I, I have had uh, so many, so many businesses tell me they cannot financially afford to do that. They cannot financially afford to do that. The hardship that they have endured already has been extreme. They don't even have enough to meet payroll. I think some of the concerns the businesses had were of the 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 cost of the circulation systems that they felt like there's three different options that they have. One is very expensive. The second one is medium expensive. The third one is opening doors and windows. And are we going to be get, are we going to be giving them a loan to do it because they don't have the money to do any of these provisions? I, I think the cheapest option for them to would be, from what I heard today, opening their doors and windows. There's not going to be a mandate for them to upgrade their circulation system. Do you have an idea of what it will cost to do the rest of the provisions? We haven't put a uh, cost estimate on that yet. Yeah, they don't even have enough money to do payroll. Why do we have to have it at all if we're going to be going and doing this resolution? I think the resolution is sufficient. So um, I did hear from one restaurant owner today that, and this kind of falls into the discussion of Loveland. When, a, when Loveland passed their resolution that they would not support it, um, the restaurants agreed and then backed out. I've seen part of the same thing with the five star program where the restrictions for the five star programs are enough to make it not worth it. If you're talking 50%, but you need to distance further, it reduces your business back to 25%. So what's the use of pursuing the five star, star po program if you're going to be back at the same capacity? just under different regulations. And so it's going to be an individual business decision on what they do so they can apply for this or they cannot. So, and, and like you said, I think there's going to be businesses. This is not going to work for them. It's, it's not going to make it any better for them than it is today. And so I think taking a two prong approach, the board passing a resolution that is fair for all businesses in town, but also at the same time, we continue to, um, support the five-star program. Okay. At this point, do we have any idea of businesses um, that are interested in the five-star program? I don't. Okay. Not right now. I would like to say one other thing, please. Go ahead. Um, on this five-star program, it it was so onerous for many businesses in Denver that they it, it absolutely closed them down. They are no longer in business. And I, I really want to stress the fact that I would like to make sure that every business and monument is spared any additional cost outside of this 10 month grueling ordeal that they've had to go through. I, 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 don't, I don't want to do the five star program at all. I really don't want the board to, to consider that. I would really appreciate hearing from other members of the board to know how they feel. And I'd, I'd just like to reiterate, this is a not a mandatory program. It's a voluntary program by the businesses. And so they can, it's just a way for them to open up sooner at a larger capacity for some businesses, not all. Like you said, Mayor, it's, it's not going to be effective for some businesses to do this, but it won't be a mandate. It'll be a voluntary action by them. Okay. Um, 
in the interest of time, I am going to wrap this up. We, it, it sounds like the majority of the board is interested in doing a workshop. Um, we already have a suggestion for a workshop next Monday evening. Is there any other suggestions at the time? Saturday. Okay. Now we have a Monday and Saturday suggestions. Um, I'm going to go Mr. around. Mayor Wilson, mm -hmm. if Saturday in the morning, not the evening. Well, I was just going to go around and ask what what uh, individual board members' schedule looks like with those days. If there's no other recommended days. It wouldn't matter if it's Saturday or Monday if we're not going to vote on it until the following Monday. So are we going to expedite a vote of some kind or is it going to wait to the following meeting? Expedite a vote. Um, okay. I agree. So Trustee Lekind. The, the purpose of the workshop was to to finalize the draft that trustee Stevens worked on. Yes, to go to take what we have in draft forms and the other input we've been get, given tonight and put it all together in, in one nice wrapped present. But that's and, the difference between a workshop and a special meeting, right? If it's a workshop, that's all we're doing. There's no voting. Uh, we have correct. to wait until another meeting. If it's a special meeting, we can vote. There's no difference between doing this on Saturday or Monday if we're going to wait till the next Monday to vote on it. That's all I'm saying. How about me making a special meeting then? Yes, let's make it a special meeting. Yes, let's make it a special meeting. Do then, we have then any? When will, then when will be the time that we create the final verbiage? So, our town manager needs to say something. <laughs> uh, one moment, Trustee Lakind, Mr. Foreman. We could, if you want to have a special meeting, we can have a workshop prior to the special meeting. So you could have the workshop to have the discussions and then have the special meeting to hold the vote. Correct. Would town staff be able to produce the documents fast enough between a workshop and a special meeting? Yes, we will. We'll have okay. the town attorney there. So at this point, I'm getting the idea that a special meeting, a workshop and a special meeting on Monday is possibly the best option. I would support that over Saturday. I would support that over Saturday as well. Okay, me too. I'll take whatever everybody can do the soonest. Okay. Trustee Unruh? Yep. Um, the Monday one sounds best for me. Okay. And Trustee Stevens? Either way. Okay. Do we want to start the special? Let's. I'm just going to put it out there and then if there's any objections, let me know. Um, we will do a special meeting uh, workshop at 530 on Monday. With. The special meeting. At 7. That'll give us time to codify everything and the town staff to handle any administrative issues in between the special meeting and the workshop and of course we'll get the copies of his resolution so that we can have it all looked at and ready to go and and make that time as expedient as possible right yeah, the town, yeah, let, town attorney will send that out today okay uh, let's not send it out today well, i'm going to give you a revised version based okay. on comments that have come in today and then i'll get that hopefully out to you tomorrow okay and then you can revise it and you know uh make your legal comments or any concerns that you have in that regard, and then uh, then you can send it out. Okay. Okay. For so this discussion I'm now considering closed and we are moving on with our regular agenda. Thank you everyone for your patience. Uh, item 5A resolution number 01 2021 a resolution entering in in an animal service contract with the Humane Society of Pikes Peak, uh, Mr. Ricci. So, um, 
related to what we indicated before when we were talking about the animal control um, ordinance, uh, this resolution is to create a contract with the Pikes Peak Humane Society to continue our uh, animal control, uh, southering out our animal control work to them um, for 2021. Uh, there are no changes to either the contract terms or the price with this uh, resolution. It is the exact same terms as last year. Okay, so this is just the resolution that goes along kind of with the ordinance that we spoke of previously. That is correct. Um, questions, concerns from the board? Is it my understanding we've had this contract with the Humane Society for over a decade now? I have not been able to find the first one. I'll just say okay. that. Okay. How many on average animal incidences do we have? That I'm not aware of. Um, I have not been here through a normal, regular calendar year yet, but um, it makes up a substantial portion of um, our municipal court docket. Huh. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Okay, if there are none, I'll look for a motion. I move to approve resolution 01 2021, a resolution entering into an animal services contract with the Humane Society of the Pikes Peak region. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Hogan. Trustee Romanello. Yes. Trustee Unruh. Yes. Trustee Stevens. Yes. Trustee Clark. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott. Yes. Mayor Wilson. Yes. Trustee Lekind. Yes. That motion passes 7 0. Resolution number 02 2021, a resolution adopting a municipal judge to serve from January 1st until December 31st. Mr. Foreman. This is a pretty easy one. The proposed resolution reappoints Judge John Chickalella to serve as the town's municipal judge and appoints an alternate judge, Stephen Sletta to serve as Judge Chickalella's discretion in his absence. Uh, this has been approved by our police department and by our municipal court administrative staff. Uh, you've been giving letters of support from them. Uh, they both believe that uh, Judge Chickalella and his associate uh, serve our town very well and have for years and wish to continue with his employment. Is this an administrative thing? We do this every year? Every other year. Every other year. Yes, sir. Okay. Two years. Okay. Um, questions, comments from the board? We have any other um, people that would be wanting to be the judge? No, our staff really believes that Judge Chickalella is the right choice for judge. Uh, we didn't go out for um, any RFQs or anything like that. They felt very comfortable in, in continuing with his services. And he's been doing it for like 10 years. I believe that you're correct on that. I wonder if he's tired. He's not. He is. He has told us that he wishes to continue as our judge. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Foreman. You bet. Any other comments from the board? If not, I'll look for a motion. I move to approve resolution 02 2021, a resolution appointing a municipal judge to serve from January 1, 2021 until December 31, 2022. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Hogan? Trustee Unruh? Yes. Trustee Clark? Yes. Trustee Lekind? Yes. Trustee Romanello? Yes. Trustee Stevens? Yes. Mayor Wilson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott. Yes. That motion passes 7 0. Resolution number 03 2021, a resolution designating posting places for public meetings. Ms. Hogan. Um, Colorado Revised Statute 24 6 402 2C1 requires public. Uh, requires the public place or places for posting notice to be designated annually at the 1st meeting of the board of trustees each calendar year. So this one I present to you, it's the same resolution as last year, naming our town website, www.townofmonument.org as our official posting place. That posting place has been registered with DOLA as required. 
Um, we also post in the lobby as uh, public courtesy and in the event that there is um, some sort of Internet outage or a reason that we couldn't post on our website, the um, kiosk at the post office will be utilized. Okay. Any questions or a motion on that? I move to approve resolution number 032021, resolution designating posting places for public meetings. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Hogan? Trustee Romanello? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott? Yes. Trustee Stevens? Yes. Mayor Wilson? Yes. Trustee Unruh? Yes. Trustee Lakind? Yes. Trustee Clark? Yes. That motion passes 7 0. Resolution number 04 2021, a resolution initiating annexation and setting a hearing date for the Board of Trustees of the Town of Monument to consider annexation, annexation of the area known as Native Sun. Mr. Manning. Am I audible, sir? Yes, you are. Okay, um, we have received a petition for annexation and you have the exhibit before you that shows the location. Uh, it's a parcel of about 10.69 acres in size, about a half a mile south of Baptist on Woodcarver, which is a southern extension of Old Denver Road past that roundabout, the Board of Trustees must pass a resolution establishing the cemental meets state requirements. That's the purpose of this resolution 04-2021, that it meets the applicable requirements of what your memo quotes as the state statutes, uh, and it's uh, considered eligible for annexation. Uh, staff does believe that this state criteria has been met. Uh, which is that the owners of all the land area have signed the annexation petition and the parcel does have its 1 6 contiguity with the existing town limits. The statute also requires that we set a hearing to establish its sub substantial compliance with state statutes, uh, which is what this resolution does as well. Um, it also sets forth the requirements of notice to the various districts to the county, county attorney, county uh, commissioners, uh, which is a part of, again, the resolution uh, language. So the steps are uh, pretty much three phase. This is the first just saying we received this and uh, it, it is in compliance with the submittal requirements. The hearing that's being set on February 16th is where we get a little more in depth, but basically established that the request is in substantial compliance. Uh, the final step would be uh, completing that hearing successfully, that we bring an ordinance to the board in early March, at which time we will have much more information, including the planning commission recommendation, annexation agreement, uh, zoning information for your consideration. Uh, I did attach the narrative from the applicant to give me more information and uh, Staff does recommend approval of this resolution at this time. Okay, so just to clarify, this is a resolution just initiating the annexation process and setting a date. Correct. Uh, in between now and February 16th, we have uh, a notice requirements that we have to go through, and that's per state statute. And uh, that's why that date is what it is. Okay, questions from the board? Uh, Mr. Manning, you you may have said it. This is in our annexation uh, as far as our comprehensive plan. Was this one of the annexation properties? Yes, it's within what they call the three mile area of the comprehensive plan. But this wasn't one of the specific ones identified, correct? Uh, no, it wasn't a parcel by parcel identification. Okay. Uh, basically large geographic areas. Okay. Questions from the board or a motion? I make a motion to approve resolution number 04-2021, a resolution initiating annexation and setting a hearing date for the board of trustees of the town of Monument to consider annexation of an area known as Native Sun, Construction annexation. Second. 
Well, we have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Ms. Hogan, will you take roll, please? Trustee Romanello? Yes. Trustee Unruh? Yes. Mayor Wilson? Yes. Trustee Lakind? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott? Yes. Trustee Stevens? Yes. Trustee Clark? Yes. That motion passes 7 0. Uh, resolution number 05 2021, a resolution approving an amendment, amendum to a project agreement to Forge Marine Associate for design and engineering service for the new water storage tank. Uh, Mr. Tharnish. Good evening, Board of Trustees. Resolution you have in front of you tonight is to is for an addendum to an existing contract that was board approved. Um, I can't remember the date on it, but it was a little while ago. And this uh, addendum is basically because we've had significant changes to the design of the new water tank that is going out uh, about two miles west of here. And the decision was made to actually run two 12 inch water mains in uh, part of the way they'll be within a few feet of each other and then they're going to split apart so that they basically help loop the entire town with that that kind of supply uh, due to the extensive survey and geotech work in addition to the uh, additional um, piping addition to it the engineer has brought us an addendum to add to the original contract the total cost at the end is still uh, within what we typically estimate of 10 to 20% of the total cost of the project is usually goes to design and engineering. So I will take any questions you have about this particular event. Okay, questions from the board. I have a question. What work was done between the time that the initial resolution was passed and uh, to, to now ask for an additional uh, $233,000, um, what, what changed? Well, it's not that, that things changed it's that things got added, which we changed, uh, I guess if you want to call it a change with the original pipeline was, uh, what, what the engineers bid on was the shortest route to get to an existing main to tie into. And once we started looking at that, uh, looking at the homeowners that we would have to try to acquire easements from, uh, there was a little bit of fear of any one of those property owners could say no, and we could end up in, a, in a, another lawsuit that could delay this project. And since this is a uh, uh, bond funded project, uh, we wanted to minimize the, the downtime or the time that we would be tied up pursuing those kind of uh, risky uh, pipeline routes. So the route that we chose uh, added a uh, pretty significant length, but also increased the reliability of the system and also gives us the potential to uh, add potential new customers as this system comes online. The, uh, the main focus of this, the reason why there's so much additional again is because we've added probably between 2000 and 2400 linear feet of 12 inch main. And we uh, actually have two mains. So if one main was to go down, it allows us to open some valves and cross tie and loop. If, if I, I think in your package, you have a map that shows you those routes and you can tell by looking at that map, the, uh, this is tying in at two different areas of town. And again, it gives us the ability, it gives us a lot more reliability if we were to sustain any type of uh, water break or a, a problem with one of the one of those twelve inch mains. Is that the map on one fifty eight, one fifty nine of our packets? Oh, I, yeah, I don't have the actual page okay. number, but this map right here. So the bottom of exhibit A. Okay. Uh, Trustee Lakine, does that answer your question? It does. I, I assume that the possibility of uh, the, the lawsuit avoidance is not from actual residents of 
monument proper. This is the getting the right of way access or easements from residents in unincorporated El Paso County. That is correct. That is true. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, uh, comments from the board? If there are none, I will take a motion. I move to approve resolution 05 2021 the resolution approving an amendment to a project agreement to for, for, Forsgren Associates Inc for design and engineering services for the new water storage tank and associated pipeline project. Second, we have a motion and a second, Ms. Hogan. Trustee Unruh. Yeah. Trustee Romanello. Yes. Trustee Lakind. Yes. Mayor Wilson. Yes. Trustee Stevens. Yes. Trustee Clark. No, no. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott. Yes. That motion passes 6 1. Resolution number 06 2021, a resolution approving amendment amendum to a project agreement with Forest Green Association for Design and Engineering Services for Raspberry Lane distribution. Uh, Mr. Tharnish. Yes, this resolution again is for an addendum to an existing contract. The original contract was for the replacement of the entire uh, water main supply to the Raspberry Lane subdivision, which is our most uh, prevalent section of our water main where we have the most water breaks over the last five to 10 years. Uh, because of the elevation changes and the hardened sandstorm in the area, uh, we typically have several water breaks a year in that particular subdivision. So the project was approved by the board to uh, replace that and to retap all 48 services in that area and to upgrade uh, the valves, the actual shutoff valves to each individual house. What's changed with this project is originally we were going to re replace the water main and then patch sections of the road as we tied in the new services. But it got to the point where a lot of these services are um, close together and we looked at the condition of the curbs and the driveways that we're going to have to cut up. And we decided instead of waiting to come back next year and redo the paving, we're going to build the, the paving and the concrete work into the same project since it's all related to a, to a water distribution main. So by having this again as part of the bond package, um, the funding is there and uh, that necess necessitated a change in the engineering to get the roadway prepped and get the uh, concrete work lined up. This project is, in, is intended to work through this summer and should be completed. I believe there's a timeline in your package. Um, I think this fall is when you're supposed to be completed. Tom, with yeah. these projects, are we affecting the amount of projects we'll be completing that we've already specified? You know, we have we have three project changes here. Right. Does is that going to affect the other projects we had lined up um, uh, for no. this particular money? These these particular projects were already started uh, several months ago in the design phase, and so they're they're well on their way in that respect. These are just changes that. <clears throat> because we changed the project uh, scope necessitated uh, changes to the engineering and the design because now the project is going to involve uh, a new roadway and, and curb and gutter that originally we were going to try to to patch to because we didn't have the, the enough funding to do the entire project but once the bond got passed it created that money to to basically fund the entire project including the uh, the new road coming through I, just to restate that for any of the projects that we haven't started yet that we plan on starting, does yes. this take away money from them? No. Okay. Does not. We're, 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 uh, we planned out there, there was a total of 15 major projects, uh, but out of those, I believe four, there may be a fifth one I'm not thinking of that were already underway before the, the bond project ever, ever started. So it's kind of like we use funding through the end of 2020, what we had already budgeted, but we didn't spend it all because the project ran past the end of the year. And now everything's going to be funded under a different line item through the, through the bond project. So if anything, we're going to end up 
with some money left over, hopefully, if everything goes well. So, and I do see this as a cost saving, future cost saving project by this expansion. Yes. Is exactly. that, okay. Because if I, if I had to do the road separately next year, I technically, I would have to fund it under the general fund. And, and a road this long, and uh, even though this is a narrower road than standard, this would cost, um, it would take a big chunk of our asphalt budget for, for next year. Okay. And so by including it in this as part of a water main re replacement, it just made sense to, to loop it all together. Okay. Uh, additional questions from the board? If there are none, I'll look for a motion. I make a motion to approve resolution uh, number 062021, a resolution approving an addendum to project agreement to Forest Green Associates for design engineering services needed for Raspberry Lane distribution project. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second, Ms. Hogan. Mayor Wilson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott? Yes. Trustee Stevens? Yes. Trustee Lekind? Yes. Trustee Romanello? Yes. Trustee Unruh? Yes. Trustee Clark? No. That motion passes 6 1. Resolution number 07 2021, a resolution. Amending number two to the project agreement with Forest Green Associate, Associates for radium removal. Mr. Tharnish. Yes, this last resolution I have in front of you tonight is after several conference calls and meetings. Um, one of the problems that we've, we've kind of ran run into is when we uh, May, when I brought to you a resolution to combine the building expansion with the radium removal treatment process, we're running into some issues with the roof lines on that building. We got two treatment plants that share a common wall and the roofs are quite a bit different. And by adding this L-shaped building expansion to it, it really complicates the, the whole issue. So part of the, the, after talking to the architects and engineers on this, they, they really would like to bring on a design team from the uh, pre-engineered metal building company and uh, have them weigh in on the uh, roofing realignment and the, so that we get proper drainage coming off that. And also to help with um, the foundation issues that we, we may have given uh, where this is located. The, uh, the, this resolution is for an additional uh, 15,000, which I think giving the what we need to do is very reasonable. They're gonna, if we didn't do this right now, we, we'd have to bring this group in at a later point. And, and in the end, it may cost us more because we brought them late into the project. It's just, we didn't anticipate this, but now that we've had those meetings with the architects and uh, we, we have uh, some people looking at bringing in the right team for this. So that's what this resolution is about, is adding that additional to bring in some design support from the pre-engineered uh, metal building company. Okay. Questions from the board? If there are none, I'll look for a motion. I make a motion to approve resolution number 072021, resolution addendum number two to the project agreement with uh, Forest Green Associates for the radium removal uh, and WTB lab and office expansion combined project. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Hogan? Trustee Clark? No. Trustee Unruh? No. Mayor Wilson? Yes. Trustee Lekind? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Elliott? Yes. Trustee Stevens? Yes. Trustee Romanello? Yes. That motion passes 5 2. That takes us to item six, discussion items, uh, 2021 Board of Trustee Workshops, Mr. Foreman. 
Yes, Mayor and the board, I'd like to receive direction from the board on um, the topic of board of trustee workshops. A couple of questions I have is how often? And then the second uh, question I'd have is what topics? I'd like to set a list of priorities for the workshop. I think we have our workshops for 2021. I think we have several issues that are gonna uh, be a concern for the town and those are proposed annexations home rule, the budget, water project updates, and sales tax proposals for 2021. So those are just some of the list of priorities that we've thought of, and we'd like to see a list of the board's priorities uh, for workshops, and then just answer how often you'd like to have workshops. Okay. Um, does the board have any comments or suggestions on this topic? I think we can bring other suggestions right. as far as topics later. Exactly. But I think we would like to start with when and how often we would do our board workshops if the board is interested in starting those. Well, I guess it would depend on the topic and how long and the time as to whether we disclose them before a meeting or use the Mondays when we didn't. Um, in looking back at the most recent ones in the fall, you know, I would much rather do two condensed budget workshops than drag it out you know, over a month or two or six weeks, that's for sure. Um, I don't know if we need to do a different day to do something like that. So, and then we're going to need to keep the fall again, pretty much open for budget and not push anything else toward the end of the year because that seems to engross the end of the year without a doubt. Mr. Foreman, I think that we might need a little more uh, work on this and maybe individual discussion with the board members to find out what works best for them, their schedule and maybe other creative ways to do it. Um, if if the board would like to go that route, I think we could we could do some more work on this, and maybe put together something that gives a direction versus okay. trying to come up with a direction here. Okay, sounds good. Does the board agree with that? Yeah. Yes, okay. yes. So let's, uh, push let's plan to have this item on the again on the first meeting in february can get it on there you bet okay are there any other uh when did we what time did we finally decide on monday to do the 5 30. 5.30? Okay. Sorry, I missed that. 5.30 for the workshop and 7 o'clock for the special meeting. Are there any other uh, discussion items any board members would like to bring up at this time other that aren't board of trustee comments? Okay. Um, this takes us to our public comment portion. Public comments are li limited to three minutes. Uh, Mr. Anderson, do we have anybody online from the public that would like to make public comment? Hello, my name is Mac Haddo. I'm the uh, senior fellow on public policy with the American Kratom Association. I had reached out to Mayor Wilson uh, earlier and he had kindly responded uh, and told me about tonight's meeting. Uh, we are hopeful that the Board of Trustees would consider hearing a presentation regarding the existing Kratom ordinance in the town. Uh, my job at the American Kratom Association is to represent the more than 15 million Kratom consumers in the United States, of which a significant number reside in the state of Colorado, and to discuss the regulatory framework that we support for assuring that safe Kratom products are available 
to consumers and that we eliminate the possibility of there being uh, adulterated or contaminated Kratom products, which I know is the goal of the town. Uh, we think that the ban is, uh, it, it goes a, a, a little bit too far. Uh, and we have worked with other jurisdictions, including uh, a jurisdiction just up the road in Castle Rock uh, to work with them on their ordinance. And so we're hopeful that you would entertain and get, provide the opportunity for me to come out there uh, and make a presentation if that were uh, the, the, if the board's willing to do that. Okay. Um, this is the public comment portion, so we will not be responding at this time, but I will have someone get your contact information and we will put it on a future agenda as a board authorization item. Um, and then we will move from there on getting the full board's endorsement of a presentation. Thank you very much. Look forward to the opportunity as soon as we can do that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Anderson, the next speaker. Ms. Slate, please go ahead. Yes, yeah, evening. Thanks again for having me back. Um, I just wanted to speak as to the five star program, which you guys were mentioning earlier. Um, I've had a good chance to read that through. Um, and I know a lot of businesses in Douglas County have been approved for that. But if you do look at it, you will notice that a lot of those are actually corporate businesses versus the moms and pops that are more typical to our town. Um, I don't actually per se have some concerns about things like, you know, the ventilation and what have you in terms of costs. I mean, I, I do think the costs potentially are onerous. Um, some of my biggest concerns are the issues of people's liberties and the way that they are expecting us to follow up on that as business owners. Uh, we will be required to strictly enforce policies that I don't believe is appropriate for me or my staff to enforce. Um, and we're also going to be looking at things like having our staff log on to central uh, databases to record their personal medical history. Um, those things for me are really not kinds of activities that I feel are appropriate, again, for the United States of America. Um, you know, we are foreigners, but I keep finding myself being challenged by a policy that just isn't in line with my understanding of the land of the free. And so I'm really, really not in favor of it. I do understand that it is an optional thing. But what we're going to land up with is I feel like this is like gateway policy that, you know, they're going to say it's for now. And then in a little while, it's going to become mandatory. And that is my grave concern about a policy like this, where we are expecting extreme behaviors from both our customers and our staff. And so I would ask you, please, just to consider that as you go forward with the, the, the programming and what you're thinking about doing with that. Um, these are not activities that I think are appropriate for businesses or for our town to pursue um, in terms of people's liberties and their, their freedoms. Thank you. Ms. Fitch, Ms. F excuse me, Ms. Fisher, please go ahead. Yes, hi. My name is Beth Fisher, and uh, I know you just heard uh, Mr. Haddo uh, talk about the Kratom ban. It's ordinance number 3529 in 2019, and it just doesn't make any sense to me as to why this wouldn't just be um, an over 18 type thing and why a, an, an entire ban was put in place. And I just, um, I know I only have three minutes. I just want to give you a little bit of testimony uh, for future reference. My husband had a uh, crazy pains in his legs. Eventually, he did have to have a full hip replacement. Um, someone suggested Kratom to us, and it has basically saved his life. Um, in terms of him being able to work, he's a coffee roaster, and he has had subsequent other injuries uh, related to his shoulder and lifting things. Um, it means that he does not have to take any opioids, anything like that, and it's been absolutely wonderful. Um, so I'm very, very thankful for this product um, being able to able to get it and having the ban in monument doesn't make any sense to me um you guys have um the ability to buy cbd uh that kind of thing and this is something that he can use and still work whereas the cbd isn't so i would just encourage uh an open view in terms of listening to 
a, a possible revocation of this order. I don't know how you do that if you have to revoke the ordinance or not, but um, just again, really, really encourage that this is a good thing and would be a helpful thing and there'd be no problem having it to be over 18. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other public comments, Mr. Anderson? Ms. Dewey, go ahead. Yes, hi. Uh, this is Chad and Susan Dewey. We are uh, health and fitness gym owners here in Monument and also residents of Monument. Our kiddos went to Lewis Palmer High School. And uh, I just want to, first and foremost, just thank you guys very, very much for um, I, I just, just very generic, just fighting for us. I think every single one of our businesses here in the town of Monument are essential and should be open and and should should have the opportunity to thrive and serve the community. Um, you know, we 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 offer health and wellness to this community, and I will tell you that although our product is a thirty minute workout, we've done over four thousand workouts for the community of Monument uh, in the last two and a half years. Um, but I will tell you right now, our product is more than physical fitness. Right now, our folks when they come in, uh, folks are, are are coming in just. You know, so excited to see eat, see other people, seeing eyeball to eyeball. Um, they they are uh, just to be able to get out of the house and be in the community, and uh, it's more than just our product of fitness right now. It is it is the 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 mental health, the 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 mental well being right now, um, and it is so huge for our community right now, and. Um, we, we've done everything. March 16th, we, we had to go online, as the governor said, and, and, we, and we pivoted and we did that. We did workouts out of our basement while the people uh, on the community of Monument worked out with us via live uh, on Zoom. And they stayed with us. Why? Because it's bigger. It's bigger than, than just a workout. They need this community aspect right now. And, uh, um, you know, we've done everything. Our, we're the clean, one of the cleanest facilities in, in Monument. We're a gym. We clean 30 times a day during our workouts, social distancing. We've done everything that the governor, every single thing that the governor has asked. And, and um, um, you know, I, I just... I just want to thank you guys, and I know I'm speaking for my wife, and I know I'm speaking for the many, many, many members that we have here in Monument. Um, thank you for fighting for us right now, and and I truly, truly believe that all of our businesses in Monument are essential, and we just want to thank you for that. Thank you. Mr. Anderson? She connected. Miss Simpson. Miss Simpson, go ahead. Okay, do we have anybody else? And we'll come back to Ms. Simpson. Okay, Ms. Christy Simpson. Uh, would you like to comment? Okay, Mr. Anderson and the other two, you said. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Ms. Purdue, would you like to speak?
Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you for your patience. Uh, I just wanted to advocate on behalf of Kratom. Thank you for your willingness to uh, entertain a presentation with the American Kratom Association. And as a chronic pain patient, I could tell you it's been very helpful for me. And um, I, I won't belabor the, the point right now because I know that this item wasn't on your agenda. But thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Simpson, would you like to speak? Okay. Ms. Christy Simpsons, Simpson? Okay, uh, Mr. Benefield, would you like to speak? Mr. Benefield, if you would like to make public comment, you are still on mute. Please unmute your microphone and go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. You have a little bit of an echo going. Okay, I don't know. Hold on. My wife's had me on the phone as well. Um, I can't hear you guys when I have my microphone on. But anyway, I'd just like to make a comment about um, the businesses and opening all businesses and considering all businesses essential. Um, First and foremost, I don't know, and I, I haven't heard anybody say this, but, and this is my perspective, um, this is all about getting rid of the middle class. And I know that may sound a little crazy to some people, but um, I'm sure most of you guys on the board are considered middle class, and um, the majority of these small business are middle class people. And um, I agree with Ms. Clark, um, with her um, motion to put this stuff in some type of expedient order and get things going here and um, just be the light in El Paso County. And I just urge all of you guys to work um, and, and really push on the El Paso County representatives to get these businesses um open back up thank you sir okay uh miss christy simpson if you would like to make comment please go ahead Okay, at this time, if you're having trouble making public comment, please feel free to email uh, <clears throat> town staff and you can express your comment. Town staff can share it with us at a later time if necessary. Um, at this point, we'll move on in our agenda to board authorization items. Um, Ms. Hogan, we have nothing for board authorization items at this time. Well, there's nothing on the agenda. However, I believe staff may have um, additional requests. We're expecting one from the board to talk about Kratom, obviously. 
Oh. Um, so we'll skip board authorization items for the moment and move to board of trustee comments. Do we have any comments from the board of trustees? I, I have a comment I would like to make. Okay, go ahead. First of all, I just wanted to say thank you to each and every uh, board member. I really respect the decisions that you've come to tonight and I am proud to be associated with you. Um, and, and the other thing I wanted to say is, um, I believe that with the all businesses being open, Mayor Wilson, that that would possibly also include the uh, government meetings so that we could have people in person come back uh, and give their comments in person at our meetings. And I would like to make sure that we could possibly consider that trustee Stevens, as well as the churches being fully open in addition. So those are my comments. Thank you again. And I appreciate your consideration of those two extra. Uh, okay. items. I've got Thank you. One, sir. I've got something to say. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Uh, um, in the short time that um, I've been in this position of trustee tonight, we had an overwhelming plus 40 people join us online. Um, a couple of the names I'm familiar with because they attend our meetings regularly, but for the most part, we had, I'm going to guess northwards of 37, 38 people that I've not seen their names before. And I wanted to say thank you to those people who made the attempt to not only attend our meeting, but also to speak up and let us know what they're thinking. I think it's high time that the apathy that we have seen every board meeting has broken due to this this issue and i hope that they continue to attend the meetings and speak up and participate in their community thank you other board comments uh yes i i'd like to mention i agree with uh trustee look and the the turnout tonight was excellent and also the emails that the board received um, regarding essential businesses and what we're doing about that um, was phenomenal and whatever the viewpoint was that you had related to this topic I'm very pleased that so many people emailed us and then so many people turned out tonight to speak to us about that topic. Uh, one other minor point I want to make is that while I mentioned I was a small business, I am a small business owner. I wasn't speaking out about wanting to help the businesses of Monument because I'm a small business owner. I'm very fortunate and thankful to God that my business that does clinical research has been able to uh, maintain itself um, I was speaking out because I was imagining myself as a business owner of a restaurant or a business that somebody else deemed non-essential or a business that made their income from selling to businesses that were considered non-essential. And so I want to, to know, I wanted the town uh, residents to know that I'm speaking up on their behalf as a as a board member and not because I'm in your shoes, but because I want you to know that um, my viewpoint is that this needs to change and we need to do whatever we can to make sure that we keep all businesses essential and we don't let somebody, um, excuse me, all businesses open and we don't let somebody else label a business as essential versus non essential. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, other board comments? I also want to thank our citizens and thank the board members for standing up for what's right. Uh, my main point was to tag on trustee clark's comment though about meetings local 
politics and the availability of town meetings uh, borderlines, in my opinion, protest and should be open, period. It's the cornerstone of our republic. Uh, we do not have a liquor license that I'm worried about the state threatening. People should come. And I'll tell you this, if I wasn't on this board and I was out there and I wanted to come, I'd get 60 of my neighbors and show up. Okay. Any other board comments? Okay. I have one. Uh, Mr. Foreman, actually, Ms. Hogan, I gave you the contact information for the gentleman from the American Cranton Association. Will you get, um, I guess that'll go on next board authorization items. Well, yeah, what, as you instructed, uh, or you stated that you would like it put on as a board authorization item for the next meeting. Oh, yes. Um, for a presentation. Correct. So you would discuss it as a board on the 16th and you would determine whether you want to, um, hear a presentation. And then if you do. We would schedule it at that time and I would reach out to this gentleman and. Okay, oh. sounds good. Uh, Mr. Foreman, did we have another Krantum, Kratom topic that we need to discuss? Yes, the only thing I was looking for, and I think we can discuss this with Mr. Haddo. He's sent us his uh, information, but just some direction from the board. Uh, we have an applicant who wants to bring a manufacturing company into the town uh, for Kratom. And just looking for some direction, our current ordinance doesn't prohibit that. It prohibits the sale of Kratom. Just looking for some direction on what the board would like to do. If you'd like to have us look into creating an ordinance prohibiting the manufacturing of Kratom in the future, or if you'd like to hear more from Mr. Haddow about this before we take action on it. Okay. Um, so I might understand that legally we prevent the sale we don't allow the sales but we have nothing that states this applicant can't manufacture correct exactly. currently fine. he's currently he's applied for a business license to sell and manufacture in the town of monument due to the fact that he put sales on there i'm probably going to reject it but if it was for manufacturing, I wouldn't have that power, nor would Ms. Hogan. Well, nor would the board. If nor it's... would the board. So, basically, we need to get board feedback on what to do in the future. Exactly. Okay. Um, do we want to just, does the board want to tie that in with the Kratom presentation? Trustee Stevens, a question, if I may, Mayor Wet Wilson. Okay. Do you remember, um, Trustee Stevens, that this was a situation that you had great concern over? Yes, it is. Yes, and I, I thought that when we did that, um, that we kind of worked it out that it could nothing could happen in Monument, including the manufacturer of of that um, substance. So, do you do you recall if um, that was included in that ordinance? I would have to defer to our attorney. I don't remember exactly whether the manufacturing, but I don't, I do know specifically we made a distinction between the sale of Kratom and the usage of Kratom because we, uh, we do understand that there are people that have illnesses uh, and that Kratom is uh, apparently an effective mechanism for, or um, a way of treating that. On the other hand, we're a very family oriented town and uh, we didn't feel that uh, having just something available for sale at the local stores or whatever that kids could go into. And I understand there was the 18, you know, rule and all that kind of stuff. But our concern was that uh, that it was just uh, not uh, our town is a family oriented town. And allowing a drug that is uh, illegal in, in many countries uh, to, to be uh, sold in our town was just something I was very uncomfortable with. And, and uh, the majority of the board agreed because that's when we passed the Kratom ordinance. And we didn't include, and we didn't include in that ordinance anything about the uh, creation of uh, any product here in Monument? 
I would have to defer to the attorney. I don't remember the exact language. I have the exact language in front of a, in front of me. It says Great. no business shall sell or offer to sell within the town any Kratom products. That's the effective portion. Okay. Can you so, can you read that one more time for me, please? Certainly. No business shall sell or offer to sell within the town any Kratom products. I see. Okay. So that was a pretty broad stroke. Well, it includes, it says sale, but it doesn't uh, talk about manufacturing. manufacturing so. yep. That's yeah. correct. Th thank you, Trustee Stevens, for discussing that with me. Sure. So <clears throat> that brings us back to the previous question. Do we want to uh, look at doing another, an additional ordinance or something along with uh, this future presentation or just doing a an additional or have town staff draft a additional order ordinance or ref, ref, uh, resolution pertaining to the manufacturing now i think we could amend the current ordinance correct that is correct yes okay is, is that the direction the board would like to do and would they like to do that in conjunction with uh the possibility of a presentation Do you want to? I'm sorry, um, Trustee Stevens. Do you want to amend the ordinance? Yes, I'd be in favor of amending the ordinance. I don't mind listening to a presentation, uh, but uh, but right now my position is that we should, um, you know, watch out for our kids and to maintain the family-oriented feel of this town. Uh, I would be in favor of amending that ordinance. I would be in, in favor of amending that ordinance now too, if you would like to make a motion. Uh, that's an ordinance. It's got to be a public hearing, so it can't be amended We're on the spot. We're just giving direction. We're just providing direction to town staff. Okay, I'm sorry. No worries. So we do have in favor and okay with hearing a presentation. Yeah, because they'll um, probably come anyway and speak during that correct. Uh, ordinance correct. change. They have a presentation. Yep. Yeah, I'd be in favor of doing that. Okay. So we can schedule that for the 19th, uh, the 16th. Trustee Lekind? I'm okay. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Elliott? Yes. Uh, Trustee Unruh. That'll work. Okay. So the direction to town staff is to set up, uh, draft a possible ordinance, uh, amending the current ordinance to include manufacturing, and set it uh, in conjunction with the presentation from the American Kratom Society. Okay. At the next board meeting, uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be an urgent issue. I mean, we could do it. I don't know what our time frame is. I'd rather make sure we take care of this business. issue. Yeah, right. the business is first. Yeah. You know. Right. So, so it does not have to be next meeting. I would almost suggest it be the first meeting in February, if that's possible. Just to let you know, if we don't do it at the next meeting, it would, pro it would. It would cause the ordinance. The ordinance has to what thirty nine days, is it? Yeah. So you'd have thirty nine days after you approve it before it become effective. So a business could come in prior to you passing the ordinance and create a manufacturing place here with no ordinance in effect, without I, any permission. They can well, today. They can do it under the current. They can ordinance. legally do it today. Right, but is doesn't when a bill, when a business comes into town is there not a uh, maybe that's just the liquor license that I'm thinking of. Is right, it can be it's it's a a business license is approved by the town. But then they'd have to build and set up a building, wouldn't they? No, they can lease an existing right. building. I see what you're saying. Okay. So there is possibility that we could have a bum bum rush on <laughs> kratom <laughs> manufacturers in the next month or so. <laughs> so I, I don't find I don't find that to be a concern. Okay. Um, 
and it's I, whatever the rest of the board members feel. I don't think I, I think this is fishy because uh, it was not pursuing the same thing. Can you hear that comment? I just said that the the businesses are the priority, and I'm not overly concerned with the kratom thing in the next by the next meeting. Okay, so Mr. Foreman, do you feel you have your direction? I do. Okay. Um, I believe that takes care of everything. Do we, uh, Mr. Tharnish? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd also like to ask the board uh, this afternoon. The the Tri Lakes Fire Board swore in a new fire chief, Andy Kovacs, and uh, I talked to him this afternoon. I thought it'd be a good idea if he was to uh, at least come to a board meeting, introduce himself, and just to put a name to the face. You guys know who's going to be leading that uh, organization for for quite a while, hopefully. So uh, I'd like to ask if you could add a. Just a short, um, I don't know whether you want to call it a discussion or introduction for him uh, at the next meeting, or if that's getting too crowded, we can always try to push to February. No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> it, it, work, it works for me either way. Um, no, I think uh, as long as, you know, a reasonable introduction at any one of our meetings would be fine, and we'd be happy to have him and look forward to meeting him and um, having him here. So, so I will just turn that over to town staff to schedule. Okay. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned.